Thank you very much. Uh, friends, good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, you know, title, at least the adoption of Nova Protocol on Access and Mental Sharing, and uh, what are the current status, future challenges, strategies for its implementation. Uh, coming to uh, the presentation, these would be the contents of my presentation. I'd like to tell you in the next 35 minutes uh, that uh, India is a gene rich country and very committed to protect biodiversity. And uh, to harmonize the CBD, uh, India has enacted a Biodiversity Indian Biodiversity Act. And uh, I would like to tell you what it is, what is the institutional setup, and then what is the ABS mechanism that India is implementing, what different uh, uses of biosources, and then what are the advantages of implementing ABS, what is the status of implementation of ABS, what is the Indian experience, what are the challenges, and what is, is required to be done. Now, India is a very rich nation, as you can see. It is one of the Beolian Center region of crops, one of the World Mega Biodiversity Center, one of the uh, Mega Diversity Nation. And uh, three of the hotspots of diversity are found in, uh, are in India, that is in Mayas, Western Bihar, Sri Lanka, and the Goa region. Then, uh, if, if you look at the uh, contribution of the country towards the global biodiversity, uh, you can see uh, in terms of microbes, plants, animals, and it all ranges from 7.28% to 11.8%. So on an average, uh, the contribution of the country towards the global biodiversity is uh, around 8.25%. Now, India, is committed or has been committing to protect the biodiversity uh, for the last several years. Not only after the CBD came into being, but also before the CBD. For example, India was a party to many initiatives. Uh, Ramsar Convention of Wetlands in 1971 to protect our wetland habitats. It also became a party to the World Heritage Convention in 72 to address the protection of all cultural and natural heritages. In 75, it also became a party to the Convention of International Trade in Major Species, particularly species, to protect the wild animals and plants, uh, to protect them from the international trade, and then in 79, the Convention on Conservation of Migratory Species, uh, to boost the conservation of these migratory species. So th these are very few agreements or mechanisms to which India was a party before the CPT came. In fact, it, was, it, it is indeed a party to all the mechanisms, acts, or treaties which are associated with the biodiversity. Then, now coming to uh, India's international commitments, India is also committed internationally to protect biodiversity. Uh, more importantly, it became, uh, it signed the Convention on Biological Diversity on 5th June 1992 and it was ratified in 1994. It is also a member of the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, UNCCD. Then, Cartagena Protocol in 2001, and it ratified in 2003, which deals with the handling, transfer, and storage of the LMO and GMOs. India is also party to the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. And it also signed the Nagoya Protocol and it ratified in 2012. 
So uh, India is very much committed uh, because it is by source such country and therefore it is committed to almost all treaties, uh, acts, conventions uh, related to biodiversity. Then I would like to tell you very briefly that what is the Indian Biodiversity Act? Because the excess and benefit sharing or exchange of bioresources is as per the Indian Biodiversity Act, which was enacted to harmonize with the CBD. And uh, the act has been enacted for conservation of biodiversity, sustainable use of its components, fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the use of biological resources. These are also the objectives of CBD. So the objectives of Indian Biodiversity Act are the same as that of the CBD. And this act is to and to implement the provisions of the act, the National Biodiversity Authority has been established in 2003. So all the issues related to biodiversity are with this National Biodiversity Authority. Then, what is the institutional structure of the Biodiversity Act? At the national level, you have the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And National Biodiversity Authority is under this ministry. It is an independent body, but it is linked to the Environment, Forest and Climate Change Ministry. This is at the national level. It's a national focal point. And then you have the state biodiversity boards. In India, you have several states, as many as 28, 30. Each state has a state biodiversity board. And in each state, there are biodiversity management committees which are established at a local level. So, it is a three-tier structure. At the national level, at the state level, and down at the local level. There are, and they have three different functions. For example, this, and, but they are interconnected. They are linked. They are not independent of each other. They are all linked with each other. For example, National Biodiversity is the apex body at the top, which only deals with the access of biodiversity by people of other countries, by foreigners. It only deals with that. Then, at the State Biodiversity Board, it deals with the excess of biodiversity by Indians or commercial use. There are different functions. And the Biodiversity Management Committee, which is at the lowest level, it deals with excess of biodiversity in consultation with NBA and State Biodiversity Boards or commercial purposes. So we have a three type structure. These three entities are linked with each other and they have different functions. Then, the national, for example, what is the function of the National Biodiversity Authority? It provides and gives guidelines for the access of biological resources. Then, it determines fair and equal to benefit sharing, its functions. It also determines what is the function, what should be the benefit share. And it takes measures necessary to oppose the grant of IPR outside India on any biological resource and traditional knowledge obtained from India illegally. It also deals if anything illegally has been taken from India and been exploited or IPR has been obtained, so it is the authority to oppose it or to legally fight. Coming to State Biodiversity Board, it advised the state governments on matters relating to Biodiversity Act, granting approvals for Indians for commercial utilization of biosurvey, by utilization of any biological resource. Then, coming to the Biodiversity Management Committees, which are at the ground level. 
Now they are responsible for promoting conservation, sustainable use, and documentation of biodiversity because they are at the uh, at the village level or at the local level. So they are responsible for <coughs> conservation, use, and documentation. It is also responsible for preservation of habitats, conservation of land races, food varieties, uh, cultivars, domesticated stocks, breeds of animals and microorganisms. And it also documents knowledge related to biodiversity. Now, therefore, this is the, the brief. So what is the Indian situation? It's all explained that we can provide the material Individuals, institutions, farmer, indigenous communities, and NBA, SSB, DMC. And who are the users? Individuals, industry, institution, researcher, academic institution, multinational companies, both Indian and non Indian. They are the user of the material. Now, what is the excessive benefit sharing mechanism which exists in the country in India? And this is very briefly indicated here that the applicant has to apply. And then these are the four categories of users of biosource. You have to indicate what is the purpose of use of biosource, whether you want access for <coughs> research, conservation, you want transfer of research results, or you want the patent to be filed out of work and the third party transfer. So there are four types of uses to which biosources can be put into and the benefit sharing is accordingly. Whether you want for research or you want, uh, you want for uh, you know, commercialization or you want for research or you want to see patent, or you want to do third party transfer. And there are different applications, there are different forms you have to fill. Then it goes to the Secretary of the National Biodiversity Authority, then you have to pay the fee, the required fee, then it is looked after by a technical officer, and then it is verified whether it's a flora, fauna, microbes, or other information because you could have the traditional knowledge also. And then there are committees. Then consultation is made by, from state biodiversity board, biodiversity management committee or local bodies. From where the material has to go, they have to bring to the conference. And then the whole application is put up to the expert committee. There are experts committees meant for different types of uses. They give comments, they make recommendations, whether they approve or not approve, it goes to the Secretary of the National Biodiversity Authority, Chairman, <coughs> and then the NBA makes the approval. And then the clearance board go, clearance letter goes with the mode of agreement. Agreement on benefit sharing and it goes to the applicant, applicant send the signed agreement and approved, it goes to the website and information. So this is the mechanism that is followed and it should not take more than three months, uh, two to three months for the application to be cleared. Then, now in benefit sharing, Indian system has said that Benefit sharing could be either monetary terms, in terms of money, or non-monetary terms. And these are some of the uh, non-monetary terms. For example, the grant of joint ownership of IPRs to NBA or benefit claimers. You know, these are non-monetary benefits. Transfer of technology. You don't have to give money, but you transfer the technology. Location of production, research, development unit in such areas which will facilitate better living standards of the benefit claimers. 
Association of Indian Scientists, Welfare Claimers, and Local People with Research and Development Activities. Setting up of Venture Capital Fund for Assisting the Benefit Claimers. Payment of appropriate monetary compensation and non-monetary benefits to the benefit claimers. So, uh, the benefit sharing is monetary or it is also the non-monetary terms. Both are subject to the Indian system. Now, what are the factors which determine benefit sharing? Then, it depends on commercialization of biological resources. Whether the biological resources can be commercialized, what is the extent of commercialization? What are the stages of research development? What would be the potential market for outcome of research? <laughs> Amount of investment made in research and development, nature of technology applied, timelines and initiation of research development to product, and risk involved for commercialization. See, the benefit sharing, when it is fixed, negotiated, then NBA take into consideration these points that what would be the extent of commercialization. They all examine that whether the product is going to be very valuable of the buyer source or not. Coming to the now, <coughs> Some are exempted from permission from the National Biodiversity and State Biodiversity Authority. Who are exempted? This is very important. Indian nationals doing research by survey by utilization are exempted. They, if an Indian national is doing research, if he is doing <coughs> by utilization, no issue. Former nationals having collaborated research projects approved by the government. I also yesterday mentioned that if any foreign country, foreign institutions, if they have a collaborative projects with the government of India, they are all accepted. People practicing indigenous knowledge, people involved in the improvement of plants and animals, publication of research, <coughs> presenting papers, seminars, symposia, valuable sources created as communities. They are exempted. They need not take permission from anybody. Then, as I said, Indian National Biodiversity Authority has divided use of bioresources in four categories. On four categories. One, for research, commercial utilization, biosurvey, biotilization, transfer of research results, IPR, Transfer of valuable resources, knowledge already access with the third party. So you have to indicate what is the purpose of biosource you are interested in. <coughs> what do you want to do out of these four? Now, who should apply? Non-Indians or NRI? This is how <coughs> non-Indians mostly part of this. Because Indians are exempted from here. Here also all non-Indians, NRIs, Indian entity having non-Indian participants, foreign people, intellectual property rights. Now for the transfer of intellectual property right, Indians are also have to take permission. And also the non-Indian entity. And <coughs> transfer of research, transfer of uh, knowledge or research to the third party. Uh, uh, both Indians and non-Indians have to take permission. So, when you apply for exchange of biosources, you have to take into consideration uh, this issue. Okay. Next slide. Yeah. Sorry. So, coming to uh, Now, number one, ABS are commercial utilization. Corners, you have to get permission and negotiation with the NBA. But for Indians, permission from SSP <coughs> is needed. Benchet fearing on the basis of cost of valuable resources. In case of no prior negotiation, 
it is 1 to 3 percent the wire is a trader and 3 to 5 percent it is a manufacturer. In case of prior negotiation, it is 3 to 5 percent the buyer is a trader and minimum 5 percent it is a manufacturer. And upfront payment of 5 percent of high value resource. So this is all fixed. Or alternatively, <coughs> you can give on X factory gross value product. If the X, uh, X, X factory gross value is less than 1 million Indian rupee, you have to give 1.1%. It is 1 to 3 million Indian rupees, 0.2%, more than 3 Indian, uh, million Indian rupee, it is 3%. Either you follow the first or you follow this on the basis of the gross product. <coughs> Second, areas on transfer of research results. It is applicable to both farmers and Indians. Approval from NBA is needed. Even Indians, if it has to give the research results transfer to some others, we have to take permission from NBA. Farmers must have required acquired the material. Uh, valuable source legally and benefit sharing is 3 to 5 percent of the royalty monetary gain of the you have to pay 3 to 5 percent and the payment is to be made to the okay coming to areas on IPR and its commercialization applicable to both Indians and non-Indians Indians who get permission of SSB or national to get permission for NBA and must have required valuable sources legally. They have to pay 0.2 to 1 percent benefit sharing of gross X factory product sale value if commercialized by the applicant. And 3 to 5 percent <coughs> of benefit sharing of the gross X factory sale if commercialized by the third party. Right? And in addition, 2 to 5 percent of the royalty amount has also to be paid received from the assignee of the license. So rules are fixed. Then four areas on third party transfer for research and commercialization. It is applicable to both Indians and farmers. Permission from NBA is needed by both Indians and farm nationals. <coughs> Applicant shall pay to the NBA 2 to 5 percent of the amount royalty received from the transfer as the benefit sharing and up if the valuable resource is high value then the upfront payment to NBA is also needed. It is to be negotiated. Sometimes some negotiations are also to be made. Now I like to tell you the what is the scenario in India up to uh, uh, 2019 total <coughs> total more than 3000 applications were seen approval was given for 1068 applications 769 applications are pending these were closed 598 because applications were not in order they were not filled properly and they are under process. So you can see uh, uh, more than 1,000 applications have been received, uh, have been approved until now. And this is the approval granted to the applicants for the last, you know, maybe uh, 13, 14 years, you can see. And these are the categories. Category number one, category number two, category number 3, right here, category number 4. And this last category is conducting the research outside India by Indians. If I have to do some work in Philippines, I have to bring a material, then I can bring the material. It is an example. And these are the applications. You could see how many approvals. In 2006, 7, 7 approvals, 26, 35, 39, 9, 16, 70, 42, 92. They have increased. 
So now this ABS mechanism has been stabilized. There is lot of awareness and people are following the system. Somebody was mentioning yesterday that uh, uh, you know to begin with every country finds difficulty but later on uh, when the system gets uh, stabilized things move finally. And uh, you know 68% are the applications received for granting IPR, for getting IPR, 68%. 82 percent, uh, around 8 per 19 percent are for commercial uh, research and commercial use. And then conducting the research outside India by Indians is 8 percent. And then transfer of research results are for third party transfer, the application of the data. Coming to what are the advantages of ABS guidelines? because some countries are in the process of uh, developing it just by policy and hence part of state efficient and damaging economy. Provides legal ownership to the conservers of bio sources, creators and holders of land. <coughs> A source of economic incentives in the form of monetary and non-monetary benefits for the communities conserving the bio source and promoting Promotion and strengthening of water state funds at national, state, and local levels. Provides a lot of money. Promoting water state prospecting, collaboration, research, sustainable conservation, and utilization. The threatened bio source will be prohibited or regulated for collection. It reduces poverty, achieve environmental, sustainable, economic development, promote ethics and equity in the nature of the bio sources. And therefore, all countries should develop this mechanism in Asia. The countries which are growing, which are developing into uh, developing their guidelines, I think they should do it as many as possible. And therefore, for effective implementation, you have better understanding, convergence, synchronization, <coughs> synergy of all ministries, all concerned. And but there are difficulties. There are overlapping provisions on ABS and CBD, ITPDR Fed Feds. There is ITPDR Fed, it's also called as Plan Treaty, International Treaty for Plant and Other Sources for Food and Agriculture. And some countries have become members. India is also a member. Now in ITPDR Fed, <coughs> monetary benefits to global crop diversity trust. If if a country has become a member of the plan treaty, there also there is a provision of monetary benefits or ABS, but the money doesn't come to the government. It goes to the global crop diversity trust, uh, which is based in bond. Uh, that ABS and plan treaty differs from <coughs> ABS under CBD that I said, and not all parties. Not all part of the CBD and those of plant treatment. So these are some difficulties. What is the Indian experience? Now, as I said, India has uh, during the last 16 years, India has uh, more than thousand agreements concluded. Out of three thousand, more than three thousand applications received in both agreements. And now, though the protocol in it says, has not to offer both to the provider and users, the difficulty is in forcing and compliance. It is still feeling a difficulty of its enforceability and compliance. It is yet to be seen how the regulated <coughs> countries, including India, have established the foolproof procedures to comply with the articles of the protocol. Even in Indian system, in spite of everything in place, the compliance is not taking place. The enforcement mechanism is not working properly. And what is required to be done? And uh, what, the effort, what should be the efforts in the Asian countries or countries which are developing the guidelines or trying to implement? 
Identification of biodiversity with potential ABS and their valuation in the select ecosystem requires <coughs> agriculture and wetlands. Now, countries has to uh, uh, undertake valuation of their biosources, which has not taken place in different ecosystems. Then, development of sorry, Yeah. Then, uh, development of tools, methodologies, guidelines, frameworks for implementing ABS provisions. Now, these are still to be developed in India. Piloting agreements on ABS, implementation of policy and regulatory frameworks relating to ABS provision at national level and thereby contributing to international ABS policy issues. Capacity building for strengthening <coughs> implementation of ABS, increasing public awareness and education program. Though in India, the rules have been made fixed, but still the compliance is not taking place. Enforcement mechanism is not there, because such, in a, such a large country one authority cannot undertake. Still, there is a lot of biopiracy taking place. But some of the measures like capacity building and, you know, awareness program, strengthening the infrastructure of the enforcement agencies, I think could be able to uh, achieve the objectives. And uh, this is all but briefly, and uh, thank you very much. Thank <clears throat> you.